about 62 participants. Let me make sure. So if you're new and you just started trading within this last month, drop a one in the chat so I can get an idea of the audience that we have. Okay. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So this call is specifically tailored for you all. Um, if you started within the last month or two or you just feel lost and you're unsure about everything that's going on. So perfect. I'm glad y'all took time. Okay, two months ago was fairly new as well. Okay, so we have 70 people. So we're going to get it started. I'm recording it. So hopefully um, I can just post it afterward. So just to introduce myself to you all, my name is Didi, currently a Platinum 1000. Um, I recently started trading, well, not recently, the end of last year. And so I wanted to host a basic training call because I do understand that a lot of people are not getting the proper um, understanding of the fundamental basics. And I feel like that is very, very, very essential and very important to building. So um, I took the time out of my night to ensure that everyone has the proper understanding so we can move forward and our entire team can collectively be profitable and we have nobody left behind. So we have 80 people on the call. We're going to get started. So um, let me make sure I introduce myself already. Um, so this call, like I said, is tailored for new people as well as different leaders. If you need like help, guidance, how to speak to your new members. If you, I personally create like a document and I actually do the same thing with all my um, mentees to ensure that I give them quality leadership and the same thing that I do for everybody. So if you're a leader or you're interested in building your team, feel free to talk to me and I'll help you with things of that nature, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. So the first thing, first, 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 for all the, ba the new people, I'm gonna start with the basics, right? So when I say the basics, I'm gonna do a Forex overview and then I'm going to do a MetaTrader 4 overview so you can understand the, what everything means on there. All right. So at this point, I hope everyone understands what Forex is, what we're doing, and how um, we exchange currencies for the opportunity to gain money, right? So we're not here to gamble. So we all are here to learn this skill so we can be become, yes, I am recording. So we can become profitable and we can reduce our risk, right? Okay, so everyone... I hope you all watched your IML basics, right? If you haven't, those are very important too. I know a lot of people that y'all try to rush the process and I know it's exciting to be able to quickly make money, but you, if you rush the process, you typically skip important steps. So if you have not watched the IML basic videos, I highly suggest that. And um, if you have and you rush through them, I, I suggest that you watch them again and I hope you all took notes on them. Um, I personally, make my team um, advise my team to get a binder and a notebook and we have organization and um so you can reference things because when you read it one time and you read it again you may see something you didn't see before all right so first things first i explain what forex is I, um so for those who do not know um about the hours of the operation for the foreign exchange market it is open from sunday 5 p.m eastern standard time to Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So unlike the stock market, we're open consecutively throughout these days, right? And so what I try to tell my team is to keep everything and always put it into perspective. And it makes it easier to understand, right? So we're exchanging currencies. And currencies, as you know, that's, money is how the world go, goes go around. So any currency from any country is what we are exchanging in the foreign exchange market, right? So with that being said, you have to also put into consideration put it, the concept in your head that we're dealing with something nationally. So therefore the market is open 24 hours for those days, but we have different sessions within these days to label and determine um, when we're trading. So for the different sessions, like I tell my team, you can always look up anything. A lot of things that I reference to is from IML basics, but I just want to verbally give it to you and help you refresh yourself or apply it. So um, with that being said, um, so let me show y'all a website, of course, to show you about the different time zones that we have for the um, foreign exchange. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm very hands-on. So I'll be showing y'all a lot of stuff and how to access it. I'm going to share my screen and show you the website where you can look at the different time zones when they open and close and we'll go from there. So if you go to www.forex, right, dot time, zone 
Uh oh, I'm spelling stuff wrong. Zoneconverter.com. I'm so sorry to call a cap. I was supposed to be on another link that allows um up to 500 people, but we had technical difficulties. So on this website, as you can see, you have to make sure at the top that you have your time zone um, for wherever you live at, of course. So I am on the Eastern Standard Time, so I will select that, right? And as you see, it gives me the different names of the different time zone sessions that occur within um, the 24 hours that the market is open from, Monday, Friday to, from Sunday to Friday. So as you can see, it'll tell you when a time zone is closed or when it's open. It also tells you the time it opens and it closes, right? So within these time zones, there are certain times of the day where you have the opportunities to make more money. And what that is called is high liquidity. So at those times, currency pairs tend to move faster or um, more abrupt than different times of the day. So another one of the most high liquidity sessions is really the London session. If you, I'm sure you heard about that one. The London session is typically um, in the middle of the night because that's when London, when their morning starts. So when you think about it, that's when the news drop, that's when business is open. And that's when everybody, all the major market participants are moving, right? So during that session is high liquidity, but also when a session is overlapping, you will always see high liquidity as well. So when I mean what sessions overlap, for example, when one is about to close and one, when one is just opening, there's high liquidity because there's two sessions open at the same time, which means two economies are moving at the same time. So I hope y'all understand that just quite a bit. I gave you the website. Like, as I mentioned, a lot of these things are on IML basics, but I just want to help reinforce it. So with that being said, let me stop sharing this. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the major market participants and I'm gonna also address NFP week for those who do not know what it is. Um, so major market participants. So most people should know by now that us as retail traders, we do not have the ability to move the market, right? So it's not us. That's why we're here to learn the skill and we're here and that's why you always say the trend is your friend. You never wanna go against the grain when trading because we, and we as retail traders do not have enough power or enough money to move the market in the manner that it does. So we do have major market participants, of course. We have the governments of all these different countries. We have central banks. We have hedge funds, um, people who work for different companies and exchange their money for them. So you have to understand how they work. And those are the major market participants. And so basically we're trading with them. They try to throw us off sometimes with like news, politics, any major, um, political events and things of that nature. You have to be cautious of that economy and what's going on. And with that being said, you also never want to trade when, in, when a country has a major holiday. So for example, United States, when it's President's Day, when it's Christmas, the banks are closed, which is one of the major market participants. So you want to be closed as well. You wouldn't want to trade specifically the US dollar. Um, also, so NFP week. I know a lot of people ask me about that and I tell my team all the time, I'm no genius. I wasn't born knowing how to trade. So use your resources, you can Google it. Um, NFP week. So that stands for non-farm payroll, right? And um, like I say, put everything into perspective. Non-farm pay non payroll. So I'm going to show y'all how I found out about it. We're going to share my screen. Right, let me move this. So you can just click on a website. It's gonna tell you what it is, right? Let's see, we're gonna do FX Street. So non-farm payroll is one of the eco uh, economic factor that affects the market. And this occurs every month of the year. So you want to be aware of it and its dates because it typically tends, this typically tends to make the market move unpredictably especially if you're not if you're unaware of what's going on right so we're going i mean wikipedia is not a reliable source because anybody can go in there and change it so let's go i'm trying to figure out the one that i clicked on the other day hmm. investopedia let's do this one 
So what is non-farm payroll? It basically refers to the job. So what the United States does is it does an, an account of all the jobs that are being filled um, within the month, right? So economics play a good role into our economy. So um, it, it, it counts all the employment jobs, excluding farm work, unemployed self-employment in private household and nonprofit organizations, including the military and of course, intelligent agencies, specifically because these organizations, they're not taxed like how we are. So those are included in this calculation. So for those who didn't know last year, the results were very, very, very low. Statistically how it was um, previously around the same time last year, the statistics were low, which kind of indicates that there could be a recession coming soon, meaning that there were lower jobs, there were less employment rates um, during the month of February, right? So what are non-farm payrolls? It just calculates the amount of employment that we've had throughout the month. And it typically takes place on the first Friday of every month, right? It's released at 8.30 a.m., right? So let me show you the exact dates. Non-farm non payroll dates. Like, <laughs> we're not gonna make trading harder than what it has to be. You learn it, can't nobody take the knowledge away from you, right? So let's see this here. You scroll down. It shows you the exact date of each month where non-farm payroll is released. The information is released, right? So what is it? April? It's gonna be on April 5th, right? But when you're, most people do not trade the entire week when a, um, the non-farm payroll is released. Because of course, prior to that and a little bit after, the market is still moving unpredictable, especially after it has to balance itself out. So I didn't wanna to spend too much time on that. If you wanna know more information, please feel free to do your research, right? All right. I don't want to hold y'all up too much tonight, so I'm going to try to tell me if I'm going too fast or if you have a question, please. Okay. So non-farm payroll. Also, I want all you new um, individuals, millionaires, all the millionaires in the making, I want you to also understand that there are different types of traders. So do not think, oh, I don't have enough time. I'm working. I'm in school. I can't trade. No, do not think that because there's different types of traders. Let me go to my resources. So we have um, different levels of trading, traders, which indicates how long they stay in the market, how often they check their trades. Okay, so I'm just going to list to you the different types of traders. You can write them down. You can reference them later, right? So the first one is called a scalper. And what a scalper does is typically stay in the market within a few minutes. And what a scalper does, y'all don't want to miss the second half of this call because I'm going to go into details about MetaTrader 4, by the way. Um, so what a scalper does is stay in the market within a few minutes and they're catching pips as the as one candlestick and a couple candlesticks are moving so they typically trade on a lower time frame which is like the one or the five minutes it takes a lot of emotions i know as new traders everything seems overwhelming you might be emotional when, the, when you're in the red or in the negative so i would not advise scalping until you master and understand your fundamental basics right next we have day traders that's typically most of us we enter and we exit a trade within the same day um, we don't spend no more than a day in a um trade and um, we typically trade on a one and a four hour chart um, to catch our pips throughout the day, right? Um, then we have a swing trader. They stay in typically a couple of days. Um, they hold trades longer for, to, for the potential to gain more profit, correct? And then we have position traders or day, well not day traders, position traders. They hold them for weeks or even months. And of course, those type of people, the stop loss will be completely lower. So the market will not take them out of their trade. So just when you're trading, please be aware and find out what type of trading suits your schedule and your, your emotions or the manner in which you're able to understand. That way you can trade appropriately. Next, major pairs. So major pairs. So as you know, we have several different currency pairs. If not, I'll discuss that. I'm going to share my phone screen and show you MetaTrader 4 specifically soon. Um, so we have different currency pairs that we trade. But anything that is paired with the U.S. dollar is considered a major pair. So for example, if you have AUD USD, Australian dollar with the U.S. dollar, that is a major pair. For if you have JPY USD, it's paired with the U.S. dollar. It's a major pair. Why? Because the U.S. dollar is one of the nationally recognized currency pairs. And, you know, we're the, we're, uh, America is the leading country out of all the countries. So anything paired with United States dollar is considered a major pair. So you typically want to trade those pairs that people, most people are trading. That way, 
um, it's moving faster. It's helping move the market as opposed to anything that's, I mean, you don't have to do just USD pairs, don't get me wrong. Those are just called major pairs. But any pair that like EUR, JPY, common pairs like that, you can simply Google it, Forex common pairs. I want you to be aware of the different types and that certain ones move faster during certain sessions. And you can always Google that as well. So when you're making your trading plan, say you decide to trade during the London session at three in the morning, if that's where your time zone is, I want you to Google what pairs are best during London session. And if you did not know GBP pairs, they typically move very drastically with the potential to gain a lot of profit during the London session. In the morning time, which is the New York session, with, with, when America starts at 8 a.m., USD pairs typically move pretty fast because that's when the United States open our market and everything moves. So please let me know if I'm going too fast, y'all, because I don't want to hold y'all too long. Um, buys or sales. Speaking generally, I want you all to know that when the market is moving up, it is a buy, right? And it, this may sound elementary to some, but please understand there are new people who need to hear some of this stuff as well. So when the market moves up, that is a buy. That is when we buy currency pairs. When the market is moving down, that, that indicates a sale. That's when we're selling currency pairs, right? And I'll show you that more in depth when I share my screen from MetaTrader 4. Okay? And just a brief explanation of take profit. Excuse me. Excuse me. Just a brief explanation of take profit and stop loss. So we, we have a take profit and a stop loss when we're going into trades so we can control how much we can potentially gain and we can control how much we can potentially risk, right? So well, like I tell everybody, the, you cannot control the market, but one thing you can control is how much you lose in a trade, right? How do you control that? By having proper risk management. And I will go into that more in depth when I start talking about lot sizes and when I show my MetaTrader 4 screen. But your lot size is very important because whatever your lot size is in, accord, in according to your stop loss, how far your stop loss is, that indicates how much you're willing to risk. You said that, so you're responsible for how much you lose. If you over leverage and you, your lot size is too big or your stop loss is too far and or, if you lose that, you did that. So just please be aware and always practice proper risk management. Okay, so that was my next one, proper risk management. We're not here to gamble, we're here to learn a skill and perfect our craft. So please be disciplined and be patient as well. Don't, don't come here trying to hit the lotto. Now you may have a winning streak, but if you don't know what you're properly doing, that can easily turn into a losing streak. So I want you to stay encouraged and I want you to stay focused and patient and worry up, chase the skill, not the money, because the skill is what pays the bills, okay? Just like anybody else learning, just imagine yourself as one of the top um, leaders in our team, right? You, it's very attainable. It's very attainable if you put in the effort. Okay, so we're gonna go more into depth into that in a moment. So, time to get my dry erase board, because I gotta show y'all a little something. Some people get a little confused on candlestick patterns. So I want to give you the fundamental basics of that first before I explain something next, right? So <clears throat> candlestick patterns, like I say, put everything into perspective, right? So when you're talking about candlestick patterns, this is what I want you to think about, right? So like I told y'all, we're exchanging currency pairs, right? So just think of it as a battle between buyers and sellers. That currency pair that you're buying or selling, we have our major market participants either trying to sell one of them or buy the other one, which makes the candlesticks move on our charts. And if you don't know what candlesticks are or what I'm talking about, I'll show you in a second. But basically, um, okay, so write this stuff down because they all go hand in hand. So candlesticks, think of them as the battle between buyers and sellers, right? So before I show you what, what the structure of candlesticks, I want you to understand your time frames. Now, if you do not know, on the top left of your MT4 screen, right, you have different time frames. You see M1, H1, sorry, M1, M5, M15, M30, H1, H4. So what those are time um, frames. M1 is the minute one, M5, minute five, M30, M30 minute, 30 minutes. H1 is one hour and so on and so forth, right? 
So what I want you to understand and to remember is for those time frames, that just indicates how long it takes for one candlestick to form, right? So on the one hour time frame, it takes one hour for one candlestick to form, right? On the four hour time frame, it takes four hours for one candlestick to form, right? Sorry, on the um on the 30 minute time frame, it takes 30 minutes for one candlestick to form and so on and so forth, right? So how do you know how when a candlestick will end? Well, let me give you an example. So right now my time is 8.32, right? So say I'm on a 30 minute time frame. The last candlestick that's moving right now, it will not stop until nine o'clock because that's 30 minutes, 30 minutes from 8.30, right? So on an hour time frame, it's 8.32 right now, it, it does it in structure in increments, right? Oh my God, sorry. I have a question. So it say, do you receive different results with different time frames? Will you still receive the same profit with different times? So give me one second. I'm gonna I'm explain it in a second. Okay, so with the different time frames. So as I said, you can just look at your clock. So if it's like 5.59, you like, oh, we on an hour time frame. In one minute, this candlestick from the close, let me see how it reacts on my market. And that's how you understand what's going on. I'm not gonna go too much into like the intermediate stuff like support and resistance. We can do that another time. But I want y'all to understand the basics and how everything works together. So with that being said, when you're on a bigger time frame, that just gives you a bird's eye view of the, the market, right? On the one month time frame, you're gonna see what price did. When you hear price action or price, they're talking about candlesticks because that's the price. And I'm about to show you candlesticks. I'm gonna draw it for you. Um, so with that being said, um, so basically when you go to lower time frames, you're really just getting a zoom in view of what price is doing. Because on the lower the time frame, the faster the candlesticks move, of course, like I was saying, on a minute one there's a candlestick forming every one minute. So in one minute, the, that last candlestick is going to close, right? How do you understand? Okay, hold on one second. So do you receive different results with different time frames? Um, you, um, not necessarily different results. Whatever time frame that you decide to do your trade on is how um, the time frame that you're analyzing on. So you can get the same results. It just depends on which time frame you're analyzing your um, trade on and how it reacts during that time. So as I said, day traders, they typically look on a one and a four hour chart to get a clearer view of what the market is doing. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, once I'm gonna read what Zari said. Um, she said, so if you on here and you don't need to be on, please make space for the new people. Um, yeah, it's people who needs the information. I agree. I should have mentioned that because I know some of my team, like if y'all on here, I did this with y'all yesterday. Y'all can get on the other call, but let's make room for some other new people because I had to get on my link and I only can have a hundred people. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, okay. So perfect. Thanks. Sorry. Okay. So I understand you can view the H1 and the H4 in the chart, but how do you know if that you're in an H4 or H1 trade on MetaTrader 4? I never see the option. Okay, Jamon, it's on the top left corner. You on my team, I got you. Just ask me after this call. I got you. All right, so candlestick patterns really quick. Um, give me one second. Let me draw this for y'all. <clears throat> All right. All right, sorry, I had to do something on my phone. All right, so perfect. So listen, I'm gonna draw a little janky candlestick, right? And I'm just gonna explain the basic anatomy, right? For those who don't know. So this is a candlestick. Of course, candlesticks, they form in different um, shapes and sizes, right? But let me just give you um, a, a, the basic anatomy. So what I want you to remember or just take note of, that's an H. So remember, high, open, close, low, right? And I'm about to explain it. Yes, Gabe, you're in the same trade no matter the time frame, but the trend and where you're looking to put the TP out on the trade differs depending on the time frame. Good example, because I didn't want to go too in depth without 
confusing um people that's really just trying to understand the basics so yes no matter the time frame you're in the same tray it just reacts differently or faster or slower when you're looking for your tps okay so kimberly you on my team you can't come in here talking about stochastic this is for basic we're going to address that later <laughs> okay so y'all high open close low right so what this means is if you have a candlestick right and if you have a wick, you typically have wicks on the top and bottom. Sometimes you don't. So what the top of a wick means, that is the highest price that that candlestick went during that time frame, right? So say we're on the hour time frame. I know it may be backwards to y'all, but I hope y'all get it. So say we're on the one hour time frame. During the hour time frame, while the candle was, while we had the battles between the buyers and the sellers, think of it in perspective, while it was moving during that time frame, the top of a wick is the highest price that time went during that time, right? But what, sorry, I should have started with open. But when the battle first started, the top of a candlestick is where price opened at. And when I say price, you know the numbers that's on the right side of your, yes, the right side of your MetaTrader 4, your trading view, those numbers when you put a cursor over it. So you have the highest price during that battle. You have the open price where the candlestick started during that battle, right? Then you have where the price closed at during that battle. When, that, when the hour ended, that is where price closed at, right? But if you have a bottom wick, that is the lowest price that the candle and the, the battle between the buyers and sellers went during that time frame, right? So let me know if that makes sense. If not, let me know. Um, not to confuse y'all though, but when you're selling it, it'll just be high, close, open, low. It'll just be backwards, right? Um, so high, open, close, low, typically. Highest point during that battle open price close price low price right so let me let me address it when y'all see the candlesticks with a small body right typically those you they're indecision candles but let me erase this right here right it's still the same concept but i want y'all to also realize that candlesticks tell you a story and that's why naked trading is preferred without all the indicators because naked trading looks at strictly price action and how it reacts to your support and your resistance line, but we'll get there another time. So, um, sorry, I forgot what I was about to say. Okay, so this is a doji, right? So as you can see, this type of candle does not have a, a large body, correct? But the same concept still applies. You have high, open, close, low. So what this basically means is the open and the close price was in the same, near the same area, right? So this just shows you during the battle, neither a buyer or a seller pushed it up. They all opened and closed at the same price. And this may indicate a reversal in the market, right? But that's, that's more in depth. I just want to get y'all the basic understanding of candlesticks and what they mean when you're looking at them, right? So Deja, that's an example of a buy. Um, not, well excuse me, I don't want you to think like a buy, buy, like if you see it looking like that, high open, close, you just buy. I don't want you to think that, but the structure of high open, high open, close, low is, I believe it's a buy. And when you flip it the other way, like high, close, open, low, that's high. Yeah, that's a sale because if you think about it, selling is down. So you just have, sorry, my brain just thinks like that. But you can always look it up to like candlestick structure. Um, so if that makes sense, let me know if everything so far is coming together and making sense. Drop a, a five and we can move forward. I don't want to hold y'all too long because I know how I feel to be on long calls. But I want y'all to get this. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, I'm feeling y'all. Y'all some millionaires. I hope this helped y'all become more confident. I hope that I hope this under, helps you understand your IML basic. And I hope this helps you understand what you're looking at when people post in the group chats. So next, write this down. And I'm going to show you on your screen. When you're in a trade, you have, where well, you see your balance, your equity and everything, you have an area called margin percent level, right? It's typically up in the thousands, but never let your margin percent level go below 400%. What that means, if it goes below 400%, that means you're over leveraging, right? And when you're over leveraging, if it gets too low, your broker will take you out. I hope everyone knows what a broker is. Um, I typically go with, go over that with my team their first day of joining. But a broker, if you have Hugo's Ways, Trader's View, I meant Trader's Way, all those different things, those, those are brokers. And they typically just leverage our money so we're able to come to the market 
and compete with the major market participants without having a lot of money. So some people can start with $20, but the brokers, they leverage our money. So it's called margin percent level. I'm gonna show y'all personally. I'm about to share my phone screen and give y'all a MetaTrader 4 overview, how to copy and paste and everything of that nature, right? All right. So I'm gonna, let me mute this really fast so it won't echo and we're gonna go from there. But in the meantime, I just want y'all to understand and remember patience, discipline, stay focused. You have to also be positive. You have to be open-minded and you have to be willing to listen and utilize your resources, right? We're not here to walk into a million bucks, but we're here to learn a skill that's gonna make us wealthy if you take it serious. So let me share my phone screen really fast. I'm gonna... Can y'all hear me? Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. And we're gonna do a basic MT4 trading, um, MT4 um, review, right? So you should have typically have most of these apps. You should have Telegram, Zoom, don't, don't have all of them now. You ain't gotta have all of them. MetaTrader 4 specifically this jcp app the one you see with the red and the green line that is exceptionally required if you ask me to understand candlestick patterns and what they mean as i told you the market is telling you a story all right so we're gonna go to metatrader 4. make sure my, i'm in a demo all right so i won't be messing up my account all right so as you can see so some people um when you go on your home screen it may look like this right I want you to make sure you're always on the advanced tab, right? And what this shows you is just, it gives you more information of the currency pairs, right? So if you just started, I know these alphabets may look like alphabet soup. It may be a bit confusing. So I'm gonna break it down and just give you a few of them and give you um, an understanding of those currency pairs. So this first one, sorry, y'all, my phone is going ham. This first one, um, AUD USD. So what that stands for is, <laughs> um the australian dollar versus the u.s dollar right and as you can see the second one is eur usd that stands for euro versus the united states dollar then you have nzd usd uh-uh y'all see uh-uh see hold on what they asking about us 30 all right bobby don't play in us 30 those are 30 indices those are stocks basically the top 30 stock market as a beginner no ma'am <laughs> Y'all don't even look at that. Uh, so, um, um, NZD USD, right? That's the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. So, as the more you get engaged, the easier they'll be there. They will be to recognize, right? But if you don't recall, you can just press one, right? And if you look at the top, it'll just simply tell you Euro versus US dollar. Perfect, right? Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to add a pair. Yeah, US thirty will take you right. It'll take all your money and have you real mad. <laughs> um, listen, y'all. So, um, okay. So, say you get <laughs> say you getting into a trade and you do not have the currency pair on your screen. So, let me delete one and show you how to add it. All right? Okay. Sorry, I'm gonna delete this really fast. All right. So, say someone calls a signal. I'm gonna show you how to copy and paste as well for the ones who may not know. So. If someone calls a signal, say say someone called a EUR JPY trade, right? That's Euro versus the Japanese yen. You'll go up here to the top right corner. You'll press the plus sign. You'll pull your screen down. Sorry, disclaimer. If you have an Android, it may be different. And um, you will have to just talk to me on the side. I mean, I don't have an Android, but I can figure it out for you. All right, so in the search bar, you will type in the currency pair that you're looking for, right? You will type in E-U-R-J-P-Y and you'll press the green plus sign next to it, right? And you'll press cancel and you will go back and it should be at the bottom of your screen, right? Simple. 
You don't have to always have a lot of currency pairs on your screen. You can also delete some with this pencil in the top left corner. And you can always add it back. Now, let me explain. Okay, Android's not much different. All right, Troy, thank you. Uh, yeah, not for this part, but I know on the take profit and stop loss, some Androids be different or confusing with just the line. Okay, so when it comes to spreads, right, let me explain what a spread is. So um, not to go on too in-depth, is basically the difference between the two currency pairs. But a spread just indicates the, um, just give you an indication of how much a broker would take out when you get into a trade. So the rule of thumb, make sure you write this down. Do not get into a, tr a trade if your spread is higher than 25. So you want to make sure it's 25 and below, right? Rule of thumb until you get used to understanding what it, what's going on and how it works. So you see, we have lower spreads. They're moving from like, if you don't see the spread, it's right under each currency pair. They're like 10, 9, 12. Those are good. You can get into those trades without the broker taking a lot. Now, our broker accounts are typically free, I would hope, right? But how the broker makes his profit is through spreads. So when different sessions open, they typically make the spreads higher because they know people are trying to jump in the market. So they try to get bigger gains. But when your spreads are low, they typically take a small amount of your trade, such as 10 cent um, or something of that nature. And of course, that's nothing to us, but 10 cent from everybody for every trade, that's how they make their profit. But it doesn't affect us if you don't get into trades or larger spreads. Now you see for um, US 30, where is that? For the people, 507, they tell you right there. They tell you right there, don't even get in it. Um, let me see this question. Not necessarily how, no, 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 not how risky it is. A spread, if, if your phone not on mute, please put it on mute. Um, a spread is nothing too much to go in, in depth about. It's nothing to like worry about. It's not risky. It's just, it just shows how the broker makes its profit. And so, for example, Ooh, my phone is going crazy. Um, you just want your spreads to be low. It's, it doesn't. It doesn't indicate if something is hard or risky. Let me put everybody on mute. So just twenty five and below. And um, I forgot what I was about to say. Um, no, 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 no. So you see the spreads are low. Okay, perfect. So now, how to copy and paste, right? And then I'm gonna show you the chart, and then we'll be done from there. And I explain lot size and everything, which is very important. Um, okay. So when you get a trade, let me go find an old one. Let's see. Let me stop sharing my screen for y'all be in my business. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see. We're gonna do I hope everybody in um push one thousand if you're part of the team. Okay, so we're gonna just do, we're just gonna do how active? Yes, more how active basically. Exactly, Troy. Good question, Troy. I'll show you in one second. I'm gonna go into stop loss and take profit more in depth when I show you a chart. But I'm about to show you how to copy and paste for those who don't know. And then we'll talk about lot size, take profit, and stop loss really briefly. All right. So I highly advise all new people to um, write down trades because it's very easy to make a mistake. It's very easy to put numbers backwards. It's very easy to try to rush and you put the wrong thing, press the wrong thing. So I write it down. So say we get a trade, right? Say we in MetaTrader 4. I'll look at where the trade is, right? earlier this is an older trade y'all so if i put it in it is not like it doesn't indicate anything that's correct right now but we're just going to show you i'm just going to show you how to copy and paste a trade right so as you can see right here hopefully you can see where it says buy e u r a u d right so what does that mean it's telling us to buy the currency pair the euro versus the australian dollar so what you'll go is see your meta trader for a home screen right I'm going to delete it to show you how to add it. And we're going to go from there again and make sure you get it. You press the plus sign. You go to the search bar. You go E-U-R-A-U-D, right? You add it. And if you notice, it's okay, sit tight, because I'm sure stop loss, take profit, and lot size is something you need to hear as well, if you're fairly new. So it's at the bottom, right? So my spreads are low, check. So I'm going to press it, right? I'm going to press trade. Now. 
We're gonna go back and look at the thing. I double press my screen like this to see it. It says buy E-U-R-A-U-D and it says market execution, right? At the top right here, it says market execution, right? Market execution means put me in the market right now. In a lot of our trades that we send throughout these groups, they're usually market execution, but we also have things such as buy limits, sell limit, buy stop, sell stop, which is discussed which is discussing your IML basic, but those basically put you in the market at a later time. So you can set, excuse me, buy limits and sell limits or buy stops and sell stops. So instead of it putting you, instead of the MetaTrader 4 putting you into the market instantly, it'll only put you in a trade if your candlesticks reach that area of the market or whatever price that you enter. So that's good. So they told us market execution, right? Now right here, very important. Lot size, right? Lot size, right? This is very important. This is how you control your proper risk management, right? This is how you control how much you can put. If the trade goes the wrong way, this is how you determine how much you can lose. Um, like I said, that's the only thing you really can't control. You can't control the market. So as a beginner, I want you to only put 0 0.01 for every $100. Now I'm going to explain to you the different lot sizes. A 0 0.01, all that is is 10 cents. So what that is saying, if you watch your IML basics, you should know that the market moves in something called pips, right? And don't think of it too much. Just think how humans take steps. The market moves in pips. So pips, one movement, that's a pip. Two movement, that's two pips, right? IML basics, video seven to be exact, tells you how to calculate them. That's a little bit more in depth for beginners. Um, but just to give you a general overview, your lot size measures how much you're gaining or potentially losing every time, a pip, every time the market moves one pip, right? So if I put 0 0.01 and I told you that means 10 cents, that means if the market goes in the way that I analyze, whether it's a buy or sell, I can gain 10 cents each time it moves. So if it moves 10 times, that's $1. If it moves 20 times, that's $2, right? Same thing if I, okay. So I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna change the numbers on you yet. But so the 0 0.01, that is called a mac, a micro lot size, right? No, 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 no. A nano lot size, I'm sorry. That's called a nano lot size. So it's just 10 cent per pip, basically. It's the same thing. If I change it to 0 0.02, that's 20 cent per pip. If I change it to 0 0.03, that's 30 cent. When it's like a 0, 0.0 whatever number, just think of it like 10, 20, 30, 40, right? Hope that wasn't too fast. Let me know if I'm going too fast. All right. So then we have the next major lot size, right? This really depends on your broker because I know some do the real small ones, but Hugo's way does not. So the next lot size is a point like one zero. Uh -oh. Point one zero, right? So what that is called a mini lot size. I'm so sorry. A mic that is the micro lot size. So the first one was a nano. This one is a micro. So what this is, is $1 per pip. Don't confuse yourself. The first one was 10 cent. This is $1 per pip. 0 0.10, the market moves one time, I get $1. It moves 10 times, I get $10. It moves 20 pips, I get $20, right? So as you can see, your lot size control how much you potentially gain and lose. But we're not here to gamble. So you're going to have the proper lot size. So if your trade goes the correct way, you don't get greedy and you're, you're satisfied with whatever your daily goal is, right? So if I change this to point 20, who knows how much that is? Drop it in the chat if you know how much that is. Right, 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 right. Perfect. All right, so, so on and so forth, right? Okay, so if I do a 1.0, anybody can tell me how much that is or the name of it? Standard. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So y'all got it. Y'all don't even need me. Y'all master traders. My bad. Excuse me. <laughs> Over leveraging. Stop loss. <laughs> ah, yeah, play with a standard if you want to. <laughs> hey. Um. So I highly advise you staying away from that. So since y'all master traders, whatever, let me be quiet and we're going to do our point zero one. So back to copy and pasting. <laughs> so we're going to look back at our, um, our, our, our trade, right? So he told us our stop loss is 
So what you gonna do? You're gonna go to your stop loss, put 1.58180, right? What you just literally copy and paste what you see, right? Now, uh oh, as you can see, right? During, in this trade, we have several TPs, take profits. We have take, take profit one, take profit two, take profit three, right? So what that is, uh oh. Sorry, y'all, my screen stopped sharing for some reason. One second. All right, sorry, yeah, there we go. All right, so your take profits. So those are just, are you going to have a link for this call? No, stay on Taylor. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I am going to have a link. I'm just playing with you. Um, yeah, Blake, give me one second and I'll let you know um, about that. So different TPs just are different take profits. So you just have to put those in separately, right? Those are three separate trades. So back to what we were doing. What was it? Okay, so we got our point zero one, our stop loss, stop loss 1.58180. Double check, triple check, because a lot of people put the wrong thing a lot of times, right? So then you look at your TP1. That's the first one you want to always put. You have 1.58765. You just put 1.58765. I put the wrong thing. You see, moving fast. And what did it tell us to do? He told us to buy E-U-R-A-U-D, -E right? So you will simply just press buy. Now, this is an older trade, so it did not go through. Yes, if you have your TP1, 2, and 3, their stop loss is typically the same. But the higher TPs you go, the farther away it is from your stop loss, right? And I'm going to explain the question earlier for stop loss. I mean, TP and stop loss being the opposite way it is though, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna draw it on the whiteboard, my favorite whiteboard. So that trade was older. So let's, this is my demo. So we got things in here running. These are old from probably weeks ago. So as I told you, if you look up here for a margin level percent, right? You see how mine says 1,730, that's fine. But if it was said below 400, I need to get out some trades. That means I'm over leveraging and I, or I'm in too many trades and the broker is gonna potentially take me out. Now. Next, what I want you to also understand is I'm going to show you the charts. But first, I'm going to show you how to close the trade for those who don't know. So if you're in a trade, remember, when it's in blue, sorry. Okay, so your margin level percent up here at the top, the one that has, it says margin level percent, and it has a parenthesis. Mine says 1,729 is moving. You want that number to always be above 400. Because if it goes below 400, that means your lot sizes are too big and or you are in too many trades at one time, which means your broker could potentially take you out because you are over leveraging. And when you're over leveraging, that means that you're, you're basically, you're, you're stretching the money that the broker is allowing you to have to come to the market. Don't think of it too in depth, just under, under 400, it's a no. Right? Did you get that, Trail? I tell you one second, Imani, when I say put your stop loss in profit. Oh, y'all advanced trading. Y'all need my little baby trading. All right, my bad. All right, so how to close a trade? You go to a trade. So I always tell my team when you're in blue, it's on you. If you're in blue, even if it didn't hit your take profit yet, until you get comfortable, all your emotions are out. If you're comfortable with 10 cents, you take your 10 cents. So say I'm comfortable with my negative $4.90 that's running at the top. I, I go to the trade and I slide it over, right? and I press check, and I press close. Now that money is mine. Say it was in the positive. That money is mine. I can now transfer it to my bank if I want to. It's that simple. We're here to learn a skill. We're here to learn, earn while we learn. So we, we're able to obtain trades from our investment team while we're learning how to be our own signal as well. And you have, clearly, we have a lot of profitable traders. So just remember, you're able to do the same thing if you listen and follow directions, right? Sorry, though. Um, okay. So, next. What I was going to show you on the chart. 
chart advanced traders. My bad. So to go to the chart, you press and hold right chart. Now for those, don't worry, don't mind my screen. Um, for those who like, I know some people candles probably look robotic. Um, let me take some of this stuff off. If your candles are like the green and black ones, let me go to my settings. I'm gonna show you. You can just screenshot this so yours can be like the same colors as mine. So what you sorry, what you do is go to settings. You go to charts here at the bottom. You go to colors, right? And you can just screenshot this. Give you some little vibrancy on your charts so you can understand that trading is really that, right? All right. Five seconds. Hope you screenshot it. Just change your colors to those. Give you a little flavor. All right, bet. Now, also in your settings, I want you to make sure your trade levels are on, right? Make sure your trade levels are on. And what that tells you is it's going to show you where your stop loss and your take profit is on your chart. Some people probably been trying to look for it. So you go to the chart, right? You see those colors that you took a picture of is these colors. So as I was telling you, when the market is going up, let me use my cursor. If the market is going up, it is a buy, right? If the market is going down like this, it is a sale, right? And what I told you, where them arrows come from, <laughs> I have certain settings on mine. Those practices, it just helped me identify wicks. I also tell my team, there's no black or white way to trade. You have to find what works for you. People have different styles, different things that help them, different things that they like. So people use different things, but what I have on my screen is what helps me look at, in addition to naked trading, I can use these things to help me understand when I buy or sell or when I should get in or out of a trade, right? Okay, so just a review of the candlestick patterns. As you can see in the buy, this is where, what, what I told y'all, high, open, close, low. If you look on the right side, that price where I got my arrow, the white price on the right side, that's the price that this candlestick, the highest price that it went at, right? Now, when you turn on your frac, your, oh, you have, I don't have a, a TP. Hmm. See, I was just pressing stuff, for example. Let me put a stop loss on here. Well, let me just show y'all so I won't hold y'all up. Let me delete this. These are so old. All right, so when I told y'all to turn on your trade levels, what that did is put these lines. It put your TP and your stop loss on your chart, right? So you're able to see where they are when you're looking at your chart. Now, tell me the questions y'all had regarding when to put your stop loss and your take profit so I can explain it. I know she said how to put your stop loss and profit. So what that means is once your trade is in the blue, you can look at your screen, right? So say I need to put a stop loss on something so I can visually show you. Let me show you. Yes, Megan. I know your message didn't go to the group, but yes. All right, let me put a TP on this really fast so I can, a stop loss, so I can show you how to move your stop loss and profit. That's what I'm doing. Hold on. Let's see. Where's price right, right now? So stop loss. Is this a buy? Okay. So I have to put it down here. Let's just say 128, 128.986. Let me modify it. All right. So let me show you all this. Uh oh, we in profit, y'all. <laughs> y'all don't go jumping in these trades because y'all see it on Monday. <laughs> you a little lost, Blake? Tell me what you're lost about. Put them in the opposite. It does it by itself, Trail. Tell me what you're lost about, Blake. Entry points. What do you mean entry points? Like when you're getting in a trade or what is considered your entry point? Because this is just a... Let me see, Megan. Where are you going, Papa? All right. Um, 
All right. Tell me what you're sorry, I'm writing somebody. When getting into a trade, Taylor, what a good entry point is. I can't, I don't really want to go into a depth in depth on that because we have um a lot of basic um new people on here for the basic training. But basically that's where your support and your resistance lines come into play, right? Your support and your resistance lines come into play. And that's how we end it when you're naked trading, to say the least. That's how we determine when to get in and out of a trade. So say, for example, I drew a support and resistance line. I'm just going to throw one right here, right? This could be a good area, too. Uh-oh, my screen stopped sharing. Sorry, I think it's because my um, memory full keeps doing that. So just to, let me go. I'm going to venture off. I'm going to venture off into a little bit unbasic. Um, and, and try to answer y'all questions. Okay, so we was on gold, right? So say I had a support and resistance. If you don't know what that is, yeah, use a stochastic. Yeah, exactly. But I know a lot of people don't know what, what those things are. No, you're. Um, sorry, y'all. I'm about to. I know some people have questions and they have things to go, so places to go. So let me send this to y'all. Yes, it's a style of trading where you don't really use um, naked trading. I mean, you don't use indicators. <laughs> See, Kimberly, I knew somebody was going to do that. <laughs> okay, so, okay, guys, hold on. One question at a time, y'all. God, y'all about to have me in here sweating. Okay, so back to entry points so that's where your support and your resistance lines come into play that's one of your really fundamentals after you understand everything i talked to today or I recap today you need to learn how to draw support and resistance lines where i have this is not typically correct i'm just showing you so what a support and resistance line is is areas in the market that have currently what candlesticks have constantly touched either it, it touched it and went the other way or it touched it and it broke through that line so we use support and resistance lines as entry points. So we wait until the candlesticks react to your support and your resistance lines. And depending on the candlestick pattern that the candlesticks are making, it determines if you should get in for a buy or sell. That is your general basic overview for entry points. To get like a sniper entry, like she says, Kimberly is um, talking about the stochastic. That is an indicator to help you understand or to see momentum in the market to know when to get in or out i don't want to go into that too much i can do another call on naked trading later um okay so give me a second let me go back to the first question moving stop loss and profit first and then i'll be sure i love to answer y'all questions i sit here all night with y'all the ones who need it all right so the one let me see who asks entry points taylor so taylor i hope that's support and resistance so if you need help you can go to technical analysis in your iml academy and they cover support and resistance if not you can reach out to me i can give you some resources um trail i know you had a question about your take profit and your stop loss now let's think about it and put it into perspective when the market is moving up it is buying right so your take profit is where you analyze where you want to take get out the market and profit, right? Your stop loss is just a safety net that we use. So you will not, so it takes you out the market just in case the candlesticks or the market goes the opposite way of what you analyze, right? So if you're buying and the market is going up, you want your take profits to be above, right? Because you want the market to go up and take you out in profit at a certain point. You want your safety net to be below. So in case it turns around and starts selling, it'll take you out at a certain point, right? So conversely, if you are selling, which means the market is going down, your take profit is gonna be down, which is below. And your stop loss will be above as a safety net, just in case the market turns around. If it gets to that point, it will take you out automatically. So take prop, stay, stop loss, just think of it as a safety net on the opposite end of what you're doing. So if you're buying, it'll be the opposite end. If you're selling, it'll be on the opposite end, right? All right, so I answered that question. I hope that made sense. Uh, moving stop loss and profit. We I don't want to hold them up, but basically what that means once your profit, once your trade is in blue, you're moving your stop loss into your near your entry point, right? That way you're having a risk-free trade. 
So that way you're in profit, but you're moving your stop loss into profit. So if the market goes the other way, you're not losing money. It's just going to take you out and just, just take the profit, if anything, hopefully not. But you're not losing money that you didn't. You're not losing your stop loss lot size ratio, basically. So if you look at your screen, right? Who asked that question? Taylor? I can't remember who. Oh, my screen. Not, is my screen sharing? No. Oh, Lord. Okay, Imani, one second. Let me share my screen. Oh, I see your question. Just give me a second. I'm going to answer all of them. All right, let me show you how to do stop loss and profit. So right here, when I told you to turn on trade levels, it, it, show, it put these lines for stop loss and for take profit, right? So if my take profit is above, what is this trade doing, y'all? Buying or No, never mind. Don't ask because I want to be able to see your question. Don't answer. <laughs> Please don't answer so I can see your question. Um, so stop loss. So say my stop loss is right here, right? You see it? So say the market is about, it's in profit, right? It's in profit. It's in profit. It went. My entry point is where it says buy right here, right? That is my entry point. So if I'm buying, I want my stop loss below, right? Just in case it starts selling, it'll take me out right here. But I want the market to take me out in profit up here. So once it goes above my entry point, right? When it's when I start getting into the blue and it's going in a buying direction, I take my stop loss and I move it to my entry point number or a little bit above, right? And what that does is it gives me a risk-free trade. Just in case the market turns the other way, it doesn't take none of my equity that you had online as your stop loss, basically, right? I hope that answered your question. All right. Trail said, why does it seem like every trade starts in the negative? That is what I was addressing when I was talking about your um, spread. Now, every trade... Now, okay, if we got into every trade and it just was always profit, blue, blue, blue all day, it, we all be millionaires, right? It wouldn't be poverty in the world, right? We, we would have had the keys to success. So for one reason why it always starts in red is because you're a broker. Like I told you, they take 10 cent or 15 cent. Now, if your trade is, in, is in going the right way and it's in profit, it's going to start in 10 cent. But if, you're going to, if it's going the proper way that you analyze, it's going to quickly get out of the red. But the broker takes 10 cent or however, depending on the spreads. So that's why um, it'll typically start in the negative. I hope that answered your question. All right, so I'm new and I wasn't for sure if it was touched on, but when you see someone post TP1, TP2, TP, okay, and so on and so forth, are you choosing one and then buying or selling? You're not entering each TP, correct? Okay, so TP, I hope you can see my screen. So you, are two, you only can insert one TP at a time, right? So basically the different TPs are different trades and you will have the same stop loss that's provided. But the higher the TP, so say right here on my screen, you see where it says TP, this red line, say this is TP1. If I have TP2, it'll be somewhere higher than that one, right? And my TP3 will be even higher, right? So what that is are just different points in the market based on our support and our resistance lines where we analyze that the market will potentially go and where it will take us out in profit. So you would just have to put them in separately. I hope that made sense. <laughs> I know that's right, Blake. Okay, okay, that makes sense. I get it now. Screen blank, sorry, y'all. I did. It's my first day, so I'm watching the IML basics after this call. What video would the support lines be in? Davis, watch your IML basics first. There's quite a few, so take notes. And then... And then don't try to force everything in your brain at one time. Just be optimistic and understand that it will all come together, right? So um, watch your IML basics first. Take quality notes, right? And then after that, you can go to your technical analysis tab under your IML basics. And there's a video called support and resistance. Trend lines are also very important as well. How do we create support and resistance line? Diamond, you can look at your technical analysis. If you need some further assistance, you can reach out to me. I can give you some resources. Um, and I, I'm in a, Bobby, I'm in a buy. Can I continuously increase my stop loss to not lose money? If I'm in a buy, can I continuously increase my stop loss to not? Okay. Yes. That's moving your stop loss and profit. But please remember if a candlestick wicks your stop loss, it will take you out as well. Why can't the stop loss be the entry point from the beginning? Okay. Yes. That's why. Um, because if a candlestick touches your stop loss, it'll instantly take you out, right? So you want it to be a little bit further back. So 
Remember I was telling you the battle between the buyers and the sellers? The candlesticks are moving. They are moving. And so if it touches your stop loss or your safe profit, it's going to take you out. These are, especially your stop loss, your safety net. So you want it to be a little bit further away to let the market fluctuate and potentially going the way you analyze. All right. My margin percent is below 400. Let me take, let me stop. Okay. Hopefully I don't have to look at my screen. I'm about to show y'all my face again now. Hold on. All right, so it says my margin percent is below 400, but it's been like that since I started trading. How do I fix this below 400 from the jump? Wait, hold on, what? Maybe your leverage percent is low. Um, um, talk to your uplink, Zaire, um, because it shouldn't be, unless you're not looking at the right thing. If it's below 400, that's not good. If I have 200 in my account, what should my lot size be? As a beginner, you should only be doing 0.02, because I told you 0 0.01 for every one, hundred dollars in your account i don't even want yes that makes sense thank you do you ever keep trades on for a day or two because you know it's going to turn but not sure when trail um that's when you turn into a different type of trader when you hold it longer and also remember the broker has swap fees for when a day when a day changes or when sessions change as well um perfect i'm glad everyone question is getting answered but jeremy i can't tell you how much to do your lot size Proper risk management, 0 0.01 for every $100 until you know what you're doing. Um, all right, that makes sense, thank you. So on signals that are called, I keep knocking myself out break even, but I'm also not hitting TP. Is there a time frame I should be checking that as if H1 or M15 to assist catching profits? So on signals, there are calls, I keep knocking myself out break even. You're moving, you're saying you're moving your stop loss and profit? Just my stop loss. Are these your own signals or signals you've been copying and pasting? And for those who will need to know, I'm going to give y'all my Instagram and my name on Telegram. Um, um, you say you're copying and pasting. No, all time frames, they just analyze differently, but I'm also not hitting TP. It could it just depends on the signal and the analyzation. It's not necessarily you that's doing something wrong if you just copied and pasted something. And that's why I want you to learn how to trade so you can become your own signal and you're able to adjust and know how. And so you can also analyze a trade before you get into it. Yes, Blake. Um, that's why I want you to be your, I got y'all. I will follow y'all back. Um, Message me, please. I got like over a thousand requests on Instagram. I never get a chance to check, but I got you. I'll follow you back. Um, yes, Blake. Um, okay, so yes, we can't force the market to do something, right? So don't think it's you if it went into negative, but that's why I found it very important to get fundamental basics because I want you to eventually call your own signal so you don't have to copy and paste. Or if you do copy and paste, you're able to look at your chart and say, oh no, I'm not getting in that. Or no, I don't look like that then to me. My team, they've been trading for a month. I have a lot of people calling their own signals because I enforce it. Trading, trading, trading. Learn how to be a signal. Um, so don't think it's just you. Um, that's why it's important to stay in your demo account as a new person. Stay in your demo account until you're comfortable. Don't come out here trying to um, play the lottery. Who is that? Is that? I see you, Troy Thomas. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, um, stay in your demo account so you won't be risking your real money, okay? Okay. I guess what I say the signals called are like day traders or our people scalpers. We're day traders. We're trading within the same day. Typically, they're going to go one. You can't force the market either. We try to produce high quality trades for y'all. Um, that's what Spiller um, aims for. That's what money team aims for. But if it does go the other way, you don't think of it as a loss. Think of it as a learning lesson in when you learn how to trade, you can go back and look at what happened and wh why you should do it differently. You're welcome. Anybody have any other questions that you would like for me to answer? And while you add it, I'm going to look through my notes really fast from my IML basis when I first started to make sure I cover some things. I'm trying to remember how I felt as a beginner. My limit, stop limit, support and resistance. Support and resistance. It's very, you're so welcome. I'm glad this helped. I hope this helped at least one person. You're so welcome. 
oh, when am I doing a class? Y'all have a team. I'm in law school. I can't give you a specific time and date because when you give people a time and date, they be waiting for you. So um, I'll let you know. You'll see it in the chat. If I do do it, I do try to handle my team first. Um, but I, if I have time, I would love, I would love, love, love to help y'all. It's very simple. Don't overthink it. Don't overwhelm yourself. Just stay focused and say, I'm going to get this. If you get frustrated, take a step back from the market. Take a step back from the market. Um, control your feelings. Just think of your, your goal and why you're doing what you're doing. Why you want to be financially free. That way, if something does go wrong or if you do get frustrated, it motivates you to keep going. So I just want to be here to encourage you guys. That is very attainable. Like I told y'all, my team been trading for a month. I have people in my team making more money than I made my first month. <laughs> so... You're so welcome. Y'all are very welcome. Yes, you can contact me if you have some questions. Um, Trail, y'all can contact me. But remember, I have a team of about 50 people, so they contact me too. So I gotta help. So if I don't think I'm being funny, if I don't, I'm in class, sometimes I'm studying. So don't think I'm ignoring you if you message me, but I, I, I get that to you. Um, just message me. Okay, I know that's Bobby Mom. So yes, you can message me. Um, how long it took me to be a confident trainer, trader? About two months. Um, no lie, at first, before I had my own team, I was kind of lazy, like, mm, yeah, I'll do it. I'll study. I'll go look at a chart. But when I got my team, oh, they put a light up under me. I couldn't even play no more. I, showed, I used to say I didn't have time because I was in law school, but I sure figured it out. <laughs> so you make time for what you want to. If you feel like you don't have enough time, five minutes a day. Five minutes is better than no time. 30 minutes a day at least watch a video, at least review some notes, have a notebook, have a binder. If I show y'all my note, let me show y'all my notebook, my binder. Um, I had reorganized it, but I have the entire binder with a lot of information from when I first started. This is one of my to-do lists from when I first started and all of that is completed by now, unintentionally, but you have to put some effort in. I have a book I printed out, Japanese candlesticks. This really helps me understand the candlesticks and how it reacts to your support and your resistance. If you would like this, I have a PDF link. I just like to print stuff. So y'all are very welcome. Um, yes, you can contact me. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Confident comes at different times. You just have to be consistent. Yes, Ronyel. Yes, Yelly. <laughs> you can't join my team. You're already a part of the team. We all trade house. Yes, I have an Instagram. It's Queen of Bangs. I'll write it again. No disloyalty. Um, yes, I, it should be recorded. Thank you for the IG. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Share the link. Can I get the PDF? Yes, just message me and I got y'all. Yay, QC. The name of my team is Quality Control Traders because I give them quality leadership. I make sure they learn how to trade because that's what brings the people. I don't talk about recruiting. So focus on your skill so you can be able to bless others correctly, the proper way, okay? So y'all have a good night. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Reach out to me if you need help. And I'm so thankful that you guys learned something tonight. Thank you, Troy. I see y'all been watching you all night. You're right there on my screen. <laughs> You're welcome. Y'all have a good one. I'll post the link soon as it downloads.